In today's lab experiment, we're going to investigate the relationship between pressure and the number of particles of gas that are in a container. We're going to vary the number of particles and then observe the pressure. So the number of particles is the independent variable and the pressure will be the dependent variable in our experiment. When we heat up or cool down a gas, like a balloon, we can see that there are changes to that gas, so that might also affect the pressure. So we'll need to control for the variable temperature. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do because we'll be working in an environment that's heated and the room temperature doesn't change much. If you've ever blown up a balloon, you know that adding particles changes the volume of the balloon. Since changing the volume of a gas might affect the pressure, we'll also have to control for this variable by making sure that the volume is always the same when we measure the pressure, no matter how many particles are in the container. This will be a little trickier than controlling for temperature, and when we get to the procedure, I'll explain it in a way that we can do this. We're going to be using a pressure sensor that can be read by a computer with the help of a special laboratory interface. The container we're going to use for our gas will be a plastic syringe, like the kind medical people use to inject drugs into people's arms. Ours won't have a needle on it though. Instead, it will attach directly to the pressure sensor. The gas we'll be using is the easiest gas to find, air. How about measurement? There's no possible way that we can count the number of air particles that are going to be in our syringe. First, they're invisible. Second, they're too small to see. And there are way too many of them for us to ever count even if we could see them. So we're going to have to use a trick. Here's how it's going to work. If we put two and a half milliliters of air in a syringe that is open to the atmosphere around it, that 2.5 milliliters of air will have the same particle density as all the rest of the air in the room. We don't know how many particles that actually is, but if we were to add five milliliters of air into the syringe that's open to the same atmosphere in the same room, we would know that we'd have twice as many particles as when we had 2.5 milliliters. So even though we don't know how many actual particles we have, we do have a kind of way of measuring them. The number of particles in 2.5 milliliters of air at room temperature and pressure will be our counting unit. We'll name this unit one puff. This is not an official scientific unit. It's just made up for our purposes in this experiment. We'll set up the data collecting unit so that it measures the pressure when we tell it to. And when it does that, it will also ask us to enter how many puffs of air are in the syringe. Easy peasy. Now remember our problem of needing to control the volume so it's always the same when we read the pressure? Here's how we'll deal with that. First, we'll measure the number of particles in the syringe by leaving the syringe detached from the pressure sensor and open to the atmosphere. For example, 7.5 milliliters of air would be three puffs of particles. Then we'll attach the syringe to the pressure sensor, and after the particles are sealed in by the connection, we'll change the volume to the same volume every time we measure. By doing this experiment in the past, I found that a volume of 20 milliliters works pretty well. When a volume's at 20 milliliters, we'll take the pressure, enter the number of puffs, and that will give us a data point. Then we'll repeat with different numbers of puffs until we have as much data as we can get in the time that we have available and with the settings on the syringe. So every time we add a volume of air at open to the atmosphere, we'll change the volume to 20 milliliters and then take our reading when we're at that volume. So the volume will be controlled by always being 20 milliliters when the container is sealed up to the pressure sensor and we're taking a pressure reading. When I did this experiment with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight puffs, always measuring the pressure at 20 milliliters of volume, this is the result that I got. Let's analyze it. The fact that the correlation number on this linear fit is really close to one tells me that a line is a good model for this relationship. If pressure is caused by the collisions of particles with the pressure sensor, it would make sense that there should be no pressure when the number of puffs is zero. 
However, we do have a vertical intercept that's not exactly zero. Is it reasonable to throw it out? The general rule is, if your vertical intercept is less than 5% of the largest value on the vertical axis, you can throw it out if it makes logical sense to do that. The highest value of pressure is about 700 and something tor. 5% of that would be around 35-ish tor. And our vertical intercept is way less than that. So we can round to zero. The actual slope of this line depends on what the actual temperature was in the room when the experiment was done. And it also depends on uh, what was the volume that we chose. In our case, it was 20 milliliters. So it's probably not useful for making predictions unless we had this exact situation, this same temperature and 20 milliliters inside that same syringe. So what can we conclude? Well, a straight line is a good model for how pressure changes when we change the number of particles. So the equation of that line in general would be that pressure is equal to some constant number times the number of particles. And because there's no vertical intercept, it's just that simple. If we divide both sides by number of particles, we can express this in a different way that's probably more useful. The ratio of pressure to the number of particles is a number that never changes. It's a constant. So what that means is whatever happens to one of the variables, the same thing must happen to the other variable in order to keep our ratio constant. So for example, if the number of particles doubles, the pressure also has to double. If the number of particles were cut in half, the pressure would also be forced to cut in half. So this is a general conclusion we can draw based on the results of this experiment. When the number of particles changes, the pressure has to change in exactly the same way.